My name is Matthew Elliott. Uh, I'm a director here at Edison Motors. Been along with these guys for a couple years now. And I came down from 100 Mile House, uh, where I owner operator, log truck driver up there, and uh, really know the ins and outs of uh, airlines, electrical lines, uh, not so much the high voltage, the spicy wires as they call it here, but uh, I'm learning uh, some of that here today. So what I'm doing is trying to manage some of the crap that we got going on under here. There's a lot of, uh, there was a lot of fight for first come first serve for space. So everyone kind of ran their lines and now we're just uh, untucking things and unscrambling and putting things in nice uh, streamline um, directions and Cable management. Cable management system is, is kind of what we're calling it. Yeah. And that's basically where you get rid of all your rub points, you get rid of all your uh, uh, stuff that's going to bind together down the road and uh, otherwise be a headache to re repair down the road. This is why we bring a logger owner operator in for cable management because loggers that own their own truck and work on their own truck have seen every single line rub through that could possibly rub through. There is nobody more experienced than a log truck owner operator in where lines go. So the fact that Matt is doing this gives me the utmost confidence in our cable management. I mean some of this we got as far as we could. There's a few things now that we've ran it. Basically everybody ran all their cables all at once. In future designs there's definitely things that I would do from production prototype to full-on production. Things that I would change and just where they're installed. There's some things in cable management we can't fix except for redesigning but with only a week and a half left to go to the show we got what we got and we're Doing the Matt's, best we can. Yeah, Matt's gonna make her work. We'll make her work. All right, everybody, you may know me. I'm Big Easy. Chase has invited us over here, me and my brother in law, Uncle Bobo. You can check us out over on Junkyard Resurrection. I am here due to my diesel mechanic and power generation background. Example we had to figure out a remote housing for the oil filter. Here's the feed from the engine. Now, quick, quick little uh, story here about finning. Popped in there again this morning. We're looking for a wiring harness and some fittings. I was told by the counter person, those aren't cat parts. So unfortunately, let us know if you've ever had to do this. I leaned over the counter, got him to give me the computer, got the young guy to show me how to use it, and went to town, figuring out where to find the parts. One's coming from Belgium, another one's coming from Waco, Texas, and we got this, which was in stock. So what we've done is we've built a plate right here to hold the housing. Now you may notice there isn't a uh, alternator or anything else on the front of this engine. There's a reason for that. We don't need one. Stay tuned, there'll be more on that later. Super easy access for this. This is why I put it here. There's a difference when a mechanic engineers something or designs something compared to an engineer. No offense if you're an engineer. Oh, well, they'll be offended. Yeah, it happens. Mm -hmm. That's how easy it is to get that sucker off of there. And here's a look at the plate that Bobo and I put together. Super simple, run the lines from the oil down here. Now this cat uses Huey injectors. So right in this manifold here is where it goes from high pressure to low pressure and then gets filtered. So I'll throw the filter back on, oil in, and then oil can come out either one of these if you have something else that needs to be oiled with filtered oil, etc. Now a lot of this truck has had to be adapted, hence the plate, different things you see. Here's the boost tube that Bobo made for the intercooler. We got the same thing done on the other side. When you're innovating, you got to be able to roll with the punches and come up with new ideas. Example real quick, this tensioner isn't going to work for the belt. Now we've gone from having to run an alternator, the big fan, power steering pump, etc. to just the water pipe. And that's because the truck's not running all the time, right? That's right. The truck doesn't need to run all the time. And when it is running, it only needs to run the water pump. I guess that's we should it. say the engine. Yeah. The engine, yes. It's, it's not a motor. Motors are electric, engines are internal combustion. And this truck uses hydraulic power steering, but it's a dual setup where the rack and pinion's in here, and it's run by the electricity. Now, the engine does have an air compressor on it, but it doesn't need to be running for the truck to use its air brakes, air, etc. The reason we don't need an alternator is because there's a generator right there. All right, so we covered the front of the engine. Now, you may ask yourself, why don't we need anything on the front of the engine? This is why, right here. 
the generator that's attached to the back of that engine. Well, how are you gonna charge your 24 volt lead ass batteries, you might say? Well, let me show you. I'm gonna show you the electric alternator. Come with me. Now, Chase reminded me, all alternators are electric. What I meant by electric alternator is EV style alternator. This is what charges these batteries. Now, normally with a regular alternator like we had on the engine, it would have to be running in order to charge the batteries. This, if the ignition's on and the batteries are powered up, the big batteries here, this will charge those at all times. You don't even need the engine running. So they're always going to remain charged up. So when you crank up that big cat to power up the batteries with the generator, you're good to go. There's no need to overcomplicate something that's already quite advanced, if you ask me. So that's what charges those batteries right there, and it frees up a ton of weight and space off the front of the engine. You guys would be amazed what that fan assembly weighs. At least 100 pounds. You know, your alternator on your truck or car, it's designed to keep your batteries charged up so when you come out the next morning, you can start your vehicle, right? Unless you left your lights on or something. On this truck, if you're not driving it, say you park the truck and you walk away from it, and you got all the lights left on, it's just sitting there. Even if you don't factor in the solar, it can sit for like over a month with everything on and you'll still be able to crank it off those batteries because the big batteries running through this electronic alternator will keep them charged and you'll be good to go after a month, up to like 40 days even without even factoring in the solar panels. One more thing I wanna, I wanna cover here, gang. Uh, I've seen a few comments asking about how does this big heavy truck with air brakes have reliable air brakes if this air compressor isn't always run by the engine. Now you'll notice, unlike on a smaller three or five ton, it's not run by a belt or anything. This is a crank driven Bendix air compressor. Now, when the engine is running, yes, it will produce air. But here's the beauty part, check this out. When the diesel engine isn't running, we got an electric air compressor back here. It's a dual redundant system. So, don't have a diesel, you got electric air. If something happens to the electric air, it goes down, you got diesel air. No matter what, something's gonna get you home. Exactly. In the aircraft industry, that's what they do. Double and triple redundancy. So, yeah, everybody's used to the big air compressor on the engine, but if you got this, you don't need that one. And if there's an issue with this one, like Chase said, you just fire that one up and away you go. Re multiple redundant backup system. It's like backup with one-way check valves between the three air tanks. You lose one air tank, you still have your other air tank. You lose that air tank, you still have a tertiary air tank. There's always something to get you home. Well, guys, this is like super exciting. We're doing the low voltage testing for the very first time. Uh, guys from Flow are pushing code to the computers on board the truck. And Dan's actually using the heat gun just to make sure that our low voltage are, are not getting too hot. So it's it's pretty important. We're kind of vigilant, you know. I got my eyes on everything, but uh, hopefully this goes well. Speak loudly, Zach. Hello, little ladies. I'm kidding. <laughs> uh, hi. Uh, Louder. Hi, my name is Zach. Uh, I'm the team's current summer intern. Uh, my specialization is in mechatronics and robotics. Uh, I've been here for the summer helping the guys out with all of their electrical needs kind of on site. Usually the flow hydraulics guys are kind of off and about. Um, ah, crap, what was I going to say? You're saying how it's your last week. Oh, yes, okay. From the start, from the, from the top. Okay. Hi, my name is Zach. Um, I've been working here at Edison Motors over the summer. Uh, I've been their mechatronics and robotics uh, intern here. So I've been helping them with all of their electrical know-how and needs and all that kind of fun stuff, helping plan and design all those different systems. Uh, today is my last day here before I go back to BCIT to finish my diploma and hopefully continue to get my degree. Uh, and before I go, uh, we're gonna go through a video explaining the whole truck and the different facts about it and everything. Here at Edison Motors, we are developing the future of electrically powered logging trucks. Here's our production prototype. At the front of the cab, we have our W900 radiator and our Chevy 454 radiator. Uh, these are for cooling the engine and the electrical components. Inside the motor, our W9 is from a, is from a C9 cat and our Chevy 454 is for uh, cooling all of our electrical components. Now, the key thing here is because uh, this truck is in a very fast truck, We've lined the whole radiator with pre-famulated amulite to help with cooling at lower speeds. 
Uh, this can also uh, help with keeping the uh, electrolytic turbulent flow within the cruet lines to be more of a quasi-stable uh, moving conjoined with each water particle. Uh, here where the engine mates with the generator, it uses a root 2 bridge rectifier to output a six phase AC line, where each phase has a phase shift of pi over 3 radians. Uh, instead of power being generated by the relative motion of conductors and flux, uh, we made it so the windings of the normal O-deltis uh, winding placement uh, to be placed in a panoramic semi-bold uh, configuration. Uh, this state of the, the astute of you may also notice that we use in conjunction with the drawn pamoratic dingle arm, uh, we use that to help uh, reduce sinusoidal depumulation and uh, side flipping. Uh, this also allows for the eddy currents and inductance uh, within the motor to be essentially removed entirely, uh, thus giving us like a huge increase in efficiency. Cut. Uh, so here in the cab, uh, we put all of our electrical here on the driver's side of the cab. We actually went and got ourselves a um, custom Rockwell automation um, retro encabulator uh, that is really used for using uh, dynamatric uh, troubleshooting and will make fixing all of the electrical and complex circuitry much easier in the, fu in the future. Uh, and here we have panoramic fuses. Funny enough, these will light up when they blow, making debugging way easier. Uh, inside of our fuse, our fuse box is made out of a discombobulated uh, custom kilned uh, dihedral uh, box here uh, that is also ash formed, fun fact for you. And then all the power runs through here, cut. Here in the headache wrap, uh, we have our main safety controller. This is our backup and our safety checks and all that kind of fun stuff. Uh, it has been overclocked to 7 terahertz, has at least uh, 4 bytes of RAM and 7 kilobytes of cache memory. Uh, that makes a really nice, robust system, uh, so we don't have failures and we have lots of space to do what we need. Uh, here we have our explosive fuses. These are designed to explode in a sinusoidal pattern with at least 7 quasi, uh, seven quasi pattern reciprocal overdrives. Uh, that means this will not blow, and if it does, you're perfectly fine. There's nothing bad that could happen. Uh, following down the headache rack, this is all um, liquid cooled. For the same sense we made, the same system we had said before. Uh, the dihedral uh, double reciprocating uh, lubricant here. Uh, it's green because that's what trucks use. Got it. Here on the back here, we have the axles. This is where the magic happens. Uh, to my left and my right here, we have the momentum uh, reduction applicators. Very important, we can't forget these. These are, powered by, these are powered by boiling aluminum and running them through these lines here. And then here we have the pumpkin and the two um, uh, cosine cucumbers on the side. Uh, this can help with side fumbling and also reduce um, ex, uh, exopedic uh, dihedral, um, uh, what do you call it, uh, oh, crap. shaking, there it is, uh, yeah, can reduce all that type of shaking, uh, so then you have a much smoother ride, it also expands the lifespan of the whole thing by at least seven inches, that's how much it will expand the lifespan, and then, uh, up top here we have these tanks, this is where we store the liquid aluminum and the boiling hot, um, water. Gotcha. Uh, so here we have implemented custom made girdle springs. This is for also reducing our side fumbling. Our side fumbling. Uh, we achieve this by running two uh, heptopepic beams uh, along the uh, skinny arm uh, parallel to the whole system. Uh, this can also reduce uh, all different type of vibrations. It also can draw at least seven milliamps of current through the eddy currents that's coming through the frame being induced by the high voltage lines. So here is the piece de resistance of the whole truck. We have the flux capacitor. Now this uses plutonium and one other isotope. Uh, what's it called again? Oh yes, unobtainium is what we're gonna be using for this. Now, when the truck gets up to 88 miles an hour, this thing will generate the 2.21 gigawatts needed to send a beacon out to all of the Cybertronians on Earth. Now, this would tell everyone that Megatron has returned and he has built an army out of Volkswagen Beetles to come and stop the colonialism from Star Trek. It's all real, it's not a TV show. 
They're gonna come here, they're gonna steal everyone's left shoe, and we have to stop them. This whole thing's a cover-up, right guys?